Hello and welcome to the Crypto Writer podcast with me, Gillian Gotzel. I present the Block Punks section. And today I have with me an esteemed colleague and friend, T. Dylan Daniel, who is a philosopher who has created his own token page. So, Dylan, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hey, absolutely. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no, this is exciting. So, First of all, before we get to the exciting, uh, the token, the coin, the, the page, which is, which is why we're here, which is like uh, amazing to think you can do this. First of all, will you explain a bit about who you are? You're a philosopher and a writer. So just tell me a bit about your background, who you are, what makes you tick? All right, I'll, uh, I'll show you a book too while I'm at it. So my name is Thomas Dylan Daniel and I write books. This is uh, the first book that I ever started writing back in about 2014. It's called Formal Dialectics. It's about the limitations of language that exist formally when we communicate. And that is a thing that I spent a lot of time studying and probably my favorite intersection of uh, basically mind and language. You know, if, if you really want to understand what makes a human being tick, I think that's the place that you want to push on, so to speak. And, and yeah, so, so so basically I'm a big nerd. <laughs> you can see big my nerd. glasses, right? <laughs> well, I, I love the um, fact your, your introductory line was, I'm T, Dylan, uh, Daniel, and I write books. <laughs> yeah, that is simplistic. <laughs> that that You've got that point. You've got that nailed. You are that nine-year-old child, six-year-old child. I write books. <laughs> and then you go on to explain the quite dense, well, you know, uh, nerdy intellectual books they're you know they're they're, yeah. they're not they they require a lot of research a lot of thinking you have a, a is it a, a phd in philosophy no just an ma but people do uh frequently refer to me as dr daniel under the mistaken uh <laughs> well you are very of, uh, expert you're very expert and, and you think a lot about it i mean i know you as a friend you 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 ponder stuff you know i mean you call yourself nerdy but yeah. you actually you think about stuff and that's interesting because not many people do stop and think. So I, I love that about you that, you know, you, you, and then you think about the words. So you think about the philosophy and people, and then you come out with some very beautiful words when you do write. So where, what about you and crypto? How did that come about? Well, I had a friend who uh, dropped that. Uh, okay. So let me preface this by saying that I actually mined Bitcoin back in 2011. And I decided that the cost of the electricity that I was using to find the Bitcoin, this sounds so dumb now, uh, but I decided that it probably wasn't worth it. It was <laughs> a good I, decision I, at the time. Fair yeah, enough. I, I, threw, yeah. I threw it away. I threw away a hard drive that has probably half a Bitcoin on it. So that's out there somewhere. If, uh, I, I think I lived in Dallas at that point. If somebody wants to go try to dig through the landfill and find it. <laughs> Actually, that's that's the new future quest, isn't it? Kids going around looking for old laptops from around <laughs> 2010, 2011. I bet the hard drives are not still intact. But I, sometimes I do wonder just, you know, how much of that Bitcoin that hasn't moved in a really long time uh, is just lost to the ages. Um, because I feel like it's probably a substantial amount. Um, but, but yeah, so, so that was sort of my intro to cryptocurrency. Didn't really jive with it back then. Through college, I had some buddies who, uh, or through grad school in, uh, from 2013 to 2015 for me, uh, I had a couple of buddies who were interested in it. Didn't get it. Uh, then in about 2016, I was selling uh, solar panels and one of the customers uh, was a guy who had a bunch of rigs that were, uh, he, was, he was mining Litecoin. And then 2017, I saw the boom and, and I thought about that guy. I was like, man, I hope he did really well. <laughs> and, and, and I stayed out. I, I was on the sidelines all the way up until the very end of 2019, when a buddy of mine shared a link to a group uh, Slack server that we have for one of our social groups here in Austin. And it said Ethereum use cases. And um, I, I had uh, pretty much just left my job as uh, director of R&D at a startup <laughs> that was working on biotechnology, because of course, and, and anyway, so, so uh, I, I went and I clicked on the link and it was uh, to Scent, uh, which is that social media network that we were talking about uh, last time we, we chatted. And, and basically at Scent, what I found was that people were nice. <laughs> so, so eventually I used Scent to uh, get rid of like sort of my Facebook addiction, but it also sort of, uh, it put a little bit of skin in the game. And this is a point where in my life where I'd actually just lost my job. I was doing Uber driving. 
uh, you, you know, there, there was not a lot of, uh, you know, liquid cash flow for your boy here at that point in time. So it was very nice to be able to get out there and start posting some things that I had written um, on subjects like philosophy, but also some short stories and things like that. And, and basically get some attention for those. Um, but, but also I was earning a little bit of Ethereum uh, for those as well, which I mean, oh, what's Ethereum, you know? And, and from there, I mean, you know, the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> you went all in. So then I guess my next question is, so, and I, and I understand that because I would have been like you in many ways too as well. I heard about Bitcoin early on. Nice story, I thought. It didn't, didn't register with me, didn't resonate with me. And then about 2017, I'd been through activism that I heard about it. And I, what really appealed to me was that whole activism part of it. And, it's, and it wasn't violent blowing up people. It was just like, let's disrupt the world a bit. You know, let's do it, you know, we're using technology. I'm going, oh, I, I, I like that. I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> so, um, I, and it was 2017 when I came into as well, so I was late. But you, I, I, what I admire about you and why we're here today is that you've just launched your own, your own coin. So how did you put, first of all, how did you put writing and crypto together? How, how did you merge those two? How, how did that come about? Well, oh, there were a couple of different phases. Um, I would say that th that really started with uh, with a different book that I wrote, which I will also gladly show you now. Um, so this is books. called A Murder in the Silicon Hills. And this is uh, a book that I wrote after my first startup broke up. Uh, and, and basically, it was, uh, I don't know, it, it was in like a sad state. You know, it needed to be rewritten to be released and all that good stuff. And when I started posting with Scent, um, one of the things that occurred to me to do was actually release this novel on the platform. Um, and, and I think uh, I actually ended up uh, probably earning more in terms of the Ethereum tips that I got for posting the chapters individually than, than I ever earned uh, selling copies of this on Amazon. <laughs> So that was kind of the genesis. I, I started writing a lot more for Medium at some point, too, just because more eyes um, and, you know, you could get paid that way, too. So that was obviously something I was angling for. Um, but then uh, I had a piece get picked up by the startup, which is the biggest Medium publication. And Sean from Crypto Rider reached out and said, hey, would you like to be friends? And I said, you know what? I absolutely would love that. <laughs> and uh yeah, yeah. So, so that was kind of uh, kind of where it started. And yeah, I mean, pr pretty much just my own journey um, through all of this stuff. I've, I found that like, you know, OK, yes, it is possible um, for your audience to come find you. It's, it's possible to make um, a decent amount of money. I, I wouldn't say like really a living quite yet um, from, from writing and, and doing that online. Um, and, and yeah, like, let, let's just kind of continue with, uh, with the Scent mission, which is to, to make it um, pay money to create things and put them online, uh, hopefully enough money for people to pay their rent and so on. And, and, and I just wanted to take that just a, a step further by refining the focus to be exclusively on books. <laughs> and hence, hence, you then launched your WIP Work in Progress Publishing. And That's you right. launched, and I was part of the launch. I relaunched one of my books on it. Won't mention the name; it was a bit naughty, a bit saucy. <laughs> but um, that was a lot of fun. So, it, I mean, the launch was fun, and I, I've been in a few into. So, t tell me how that's going because you have a you had a bunch of uh, Genesis writers, if you like Genesis books, quite a mm -hmm. wide variety from erotica, guilty, through to <laughs> other stuff. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. We it's amazing what you can write these days, isn't it? <laughs> But we had a book about uh, language. We had a uh, we had a graphic novel. Yes, yeah, and, <laughs> and, and a handful of regular novels. I mean, it, yeah, it was it was um it was quite diverse, and and really the idea was was to to do an experiment and see uh, see what the writers thought about it, see how uh, how it went on the financial side, and basically the the goal wasn't to you know necessarily sell out all the books, although that would have been super nice. The goal was just to put something out there and see what happened and kind of start tweaking it from there. Um, so so it, at the end of the day, um, what it was was sort of a, a learning experience, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And, yeah. and basically what we what we realized is, you know, we are cooking with gas here, um, but the architecture and the ecosystem and the infrastructure uh, that need to exist to put books on the blockchain in a meaningful way 
um, and contend at, you know, sort of the global level with some of these other, uh, you know, major, major publishers, um, you, you know, there they just needed to be more support. Um, and so the reason that we decided to start a cryptocurrency is because, because starting you could. a cryptocurrency, <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, there's that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, of Cause, course. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm Dylan. I write books, and I can create cryptocurrency. It's just like it's just like that, <laughs> that very straightforward thinking. <clears throat> well, um, I, I will say that as a student of uh, human behavior, I, I think it's very important to note that uh, economic incentives to act in a particular way are one of the most powerful um, tools that we have available to us to change the world. And, and so I, I was involved with the pizza dough, which uh, I believe you were involved to some extent <laughs> no, as well. I'm dogging your footsteps. I'm so sorry. Wherever you go, where's Dylan? Something interesting over there. Let's follow him. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, but, but so the pizza dough has, um, in, instead of a cryptocurrency, they have NFTs. Um, and basically these are non-fungible tokens, which still function in a, in a similar way to you know what you would expect in a uh, cryptocurrency to function in um, because it's basically uh, it's an economic structure that has certain behavior and what that behavior is for the pizza dough is it's an art market <laughs> that as a normal consequence of its everyday operation buys people pizza <laughs> i mean it, it just it still makes me so happy to say that I, i'm so glad that i got to be a part of that and everything and we should have a book coming out with them uh, before too terribly long as well. But I do also uh, want to just go ahead and take note of the fact that the abstract concept here mm -hmm. is that you have, with cryptocurrencies, the ability to structure an economy any way that you choose. Anyway, I mean, you, you can just do it. And, and basically, if it doesn't work, um, the consequences are pretty pretty minimal. I mean, basically, people just don't get involved and don't care about it. And it just doesn't do what it was supposed to do. Um, fortunately, that's not what's happened with Page thus far. We, we launched the token about two weeks ago. Yesterday, we finally launched the liquidity mining incentives. Um, looking at the graph right now, and it looks like the token price is about 30 cents. Uh, there's about four and a half ETH in liquidity there. So uh, we're kind of still slowly building that up. Um, but, but the goal here is to basically end up in a situation where we can use the page token to not only pay the development team uh, that, that's building all the technology, um, but we can also do things like, you know, for example, the liquidity mining incentives. So, so it's a strong incentive. Uh, basically, if you if you come in and you liquidity pull your ETH versus our page token, then then what happens is you actually accumulate additional page tokens. So, so what, what this means is that your ownership share in the network goes up. <laughs> and, and, and so basically like this sort of uh, participation-based uh, network ownership model is, is just a really, really powerful thing. And, and we intend to do uh, this so that we can create the network that we'll use to, you know, send books around and, you know, publish our books and <laughs> all that good stuff. So um, there, there's it's even like a, a, a book club on steroids and crypto. Exactly. And, and there's or a writer's a group, volume. writer's group, maybe. <laughs> well, there's, a, uh, there's another set of incentives called volume mining incentives. Um, and so what volume mining incentives aim to do, like the, the example is uh, Rarible, right? You, you make purchases on Rarible and you get the Rary token. Or you uh, sell something on Rarible, I believe you also get Rary tokens if you do that. And so that gives you a voice in the governance of the community. And, and I, I think that's really important. I mean, uh, the CEO of Gumroad raised uh, $5 million earlier this year from a, a, a crowdfunding event. And he said, look, who do I want to own this company? Well, I want the customers to own this company. And, and I, I think that uh, ba basically we're taking that same principle and just applying it harder. <laughs> you know? um, so... so Pretty much uh, as a struggling writer myself, I've been through <laughs> kind of all of the different things that you can kind of go through in terms of just, uh, you know, the, uh, trying to trying to survive as a creative person in the world. And, and so so that process is kind of informed, uh, I, I guess you could say, what my approach to the tokenomics 
of books ought to be. Um, and I, I, I'm going to go ahead and go long term on you here. Okay. I, I want these things to basically be equivalent to currency at some point. And the way that we hope to establish that is by creating automated market makers that manage the distribution and creation of NFT books in a pools that match against the page token, which we're, we're going to, you know, we're designing, you know, everything from the, the precision in terms of decimal points to the number of tokens that will eventually be released on the Cosmos SDK blockchain we intend to use. Um, all of that, you know, basically is, does, is being designed around um, this long-term vision of basically making books uh, a thing that you can go and you can buy and you can read and then you can turn around and you can sell it to someone else or you can sell it back into the liquidity pool that you bought it from. And, and so, so there's always a market for it. And what that does is that makes them very, very liquid, which is going to change everything. It's going to be so crazy. I can't wait. <laughs> I love that as a writer with several books to my name, all of which have sold. Well, one, one, the erotic one sold quite a lot, actually. <laughs> I wonder why. But all the other ones were very slow, slow sellers. I mean, they've, they've sold, you know, into, and enough to make me feel validated as a human being and a writer. People have paid money That's for it. That's good. But I haven't, I haven't made my living from it, which is where I, I would like to be. But I, I love that concept. So just like the use case. So you have, you write a book, it's involved, it becomes an NFT, people buy it, and then it becomes a thing of value, not just, the value is not just in the fact that you paid, you know, your $20 for your book, whatever it is, your $10, I don't know what prices are in the US. But the value is the book itself is a currency. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of uh, just making Jeff Bezos richer, which is what happens when you buy a book on Kindle, and they charge 35 to 70 percent fees, even for the electronic book, which is just unbelievable. You know, I mean, really, really they got they got their hands in your pockets if you're a self-published writer and you're you're working with them uh, over here. The, the plan is to basically use our uh, nascent economics, um, our tokenomics, if you will, um, to, to basically change the entire the entirety of the game. I, I, I don't think anybody will ever publish a book with any project that I'm available uh, or working on that, that'll charge a fee of more than say 5% or so. Um, so. So keeping the fees low is really, really important. Uh, we, we do need to be able to token gate the books so that people need to buy them in order to read them. Um, but, you know, I mean, with the, with the Genesis tokens and with the alpha tokens actually, we're, we're, you know, keeping everything completely open and, and we plan to make that available as an op option for the authors to do uh, pretty much from now on. Um, so, so, you know, if, if you got like a textbook or something and, you know, there's a bunch of people who contributed and they need to get paid and, you know, the, the students don't necessarily, you know, buy the textbook because they love it. You know, they, they buy the textbook because they have to because it's for class and, you know, all, all these good things. Well, we, we can make that market more efficient. We, we can make it more efficient for those contributors to get paid for their work. Um, and, and we can do all of that stuff behind a token gate so, so that we're not actually giving out like all of that IP and, and just destroying the textbook market. Um, so, so pretty much the, the goal is to kind of analogize from what exists today uh, to, to what should exist on the blockchain with, with like this sort of overarching concern that we want to improve the efficiency uh, th that these markets have had historically uh, so, so that writers make more money, but, but also so that, you know, as a, as a book uh, buyer, you know, my, my journey doesn't end with the purchase of an electronic book. If I purchase an NFT book instead, what I own is a piece of, you know, real estate um, right now on the Ethereum or the Matic blockchain. And, and that real estate is, uh, is virtual, of course, but, but it's worth something. Right. And, and so by holding that real estate, I could, you know, hopefully, you know, uh, collect value for it in the future um, or, or, you know, by, by making it more and more liquid um, as time goes by. Um, it, it just becomes one of these things where your book collection um, and your ability to curate good books that other people want to read uh, can, can become a means by which to sustain yourself, which uh, I mean, up until up until this point in history, that 
hasn't really been much of a thing. <laughs> no, no, you people end up with a surplus of books and they bring them down to the charity shop or the, the old folks home, whatever. So mm -hmm. what, how do you differentiate between a good book and a bad book? I know it's kind of subjective, but you know, the quality of the book, how does that work? How do you rate stuff or? Well, I mean, basically the, the plan at, the, at this moment is to get people to do that for us. Okay. Um, so so the, the way we're gonna roll out the page network is it's gonna start with the publisher. And the reason it needs to start with publishers is because of a simple problem that's always existed in publishing, which is plagiarism. <laughs> uh, so we, we got to vet the, the work before we put it on because we don't want somebody to publish, you know, the, the script of Mulan to like our network and have, you know, Disney come do whatever heinous thing they would do. Um, so, so we got to make sure that there's no uh, major blunders like that. But, but long term, there actually is a plan to create um, a, a, an application specific blockchain around a curated um, selection of content. And, and the way that's going to work is going to be a lot more autonomous. Um, in fact, we plan to use a DAO uh, to sort of make the plagiarism calls and, you know, basically create the rules um, and then enforce the rules. And the way that'll work is if you have content that you would like to distribute this way, what you do is you stake that content into circulation alongside a certain amount of page tokens, or it actually may be a different token. This may be a, you know, a layer on top of what we've already built and are already working on. Uh, but, but basically, once someone stakes that, that token, uh, that, that token is in the system. So what do we do? Well, if we find plagiarism in that work, or if you know, there's some kind of violation or something, then the person who discovered it receives the stake. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> so, so, so the person okay. who put it in there gets slashed and all their tokens that you know have that violation in them get burned and whoever discovered the, the, the problem receives the cryptocurrency and-, and That's clever, yeah. that's a clever. But, but what about if the book is just stinking bad? It's a bad book. People just don't buy it. Can, it. Yeah, as long as it's not like illegal, you know, it can still yeah. be- in the network, there's no problem with uh, with bad books. In fact, uh, I've I've read some bad books that I've I absolutely written some bad love. Books. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you've read them. I've written them. But, I mean, we want the bad books. We want the good books. We want the bad books. We want the kind of Small middling commerce. books in the middle. That <laughs> so, uh, two questions for you then before I close. One is, if you are a crypto nut, how do you get involved? <laughs> Oh man, what a great question. Yeah, if you are a crypto nut, you should probably come look for us on Uniswap because we have some liquidity pool action going on. And right now, the liquidity mining incentives are live, they're fresh. Uh, so I believe the APY currently is still something in the neighborhood of 2000%. Uh, <laughs> um, that, that won't last forever. It's more people and that's, come in. And, and when you went to this week, could be very um, the mechanics. When you want to uh, provide liquidity to the pool, you, you just buy the page tokens. Is that what it is? Or do you have to do something else with them? Do you have to buy and stake? There's a little bit more to it than that. There's basically three steps. The first step is to get some page token. Uh, the second step is to stake that page token and some Ethereum into the Uniswap liquidity pool. Mm -hmm. um, so it's on Uniswap V2. You, you can actually uh, do the trade via MetaMask <laughs> these days because, I mean, they're just, they're doing a great job with their technology. I mean, it's really cool. It's, it searches like seven different uh, liquidity provider platforms. Um, but, but okay, so, so let's say that you've got your page tokens, you've staked it against ETH into the liquidity pool. Now you want your rewards. Well, there's an uh, app.tosdis.finance um, it is where we actually have our liquidity mining incentives set up. So you, when you stake your tokens into the liquidity pool, you've got unique uh, liquidity pool tokens that, that go just to that one liquidity pool. And so we have a staking pool that you can stake only that one sort of token into that gives you the rewards paid out in page over time. And, and basically the, the point of doing it this way is that this is a participatory way to, you know, one, determine who is the most active participant in this ecosystem and two, reward those people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you can't do anything without those people. You, you want I'm those people to be the ones that have the network to share. I'm going to suggest you do, not in this video, a, a how-to video, a 101 video and say, here I am, share your screen. I am doing this now. I am doing that now because mm -hmm. I would like to get involved and I'm all 
butterfingers when it comes to real stuff. <laughs> so for me, if not if only, only for me to do it. Second question is writers, how do they get involved? Do they approach you as a, as a publisher with WIP Publishing? Is that what you're looking for? That's pretty much uh, the size of it for the moment still. Um, because like, what we have in terms of the technology, it does not scale yet. Yeah. Um, so, so we're, we're actually, uh, we're, we're going slow on adding new writers in. Um, the, the hope is to actually scale it by adding additional publishers. Um, and because the publishers can help us with, you know, things like knowing who the writers are, you know, things with, uh, you know, plagiarism and other, you know, IP related uh, DRM type risks um, along that line. Uh, the, the, you can't just, yeah, I mean, you can't just build an application and, and, and scale it because the, the chances are that, that some user is going to come in and break the law and, and then the whole platform's in big trouble and we don't want that, you know? So, uh, so, so the question of how to scale is uh, definitely at the forefront of our, of our <laughs> minds here. Um, but, but yeah, for, for now, if, if someone really wants to get involved as a writer, what that person should do is go to HTTPS colon backslash backslash whippublishing.com. And then we've got a form right there. They can just click on it and sign up to be an author. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that when this goes on the Crypto Writer podcast, we put that link in there as well. Fascinating. Okay. I'm going to looking forward to your 101 video, please, because I really need step by step things like my kids. I have an article my that explains those uh, same couple of points, too. If you'd okay, like I, might, that. I might link that, too. So I won't do it now, but I'll link it in the, in the show notes. Um, and then I recommend writers to get in contact with you as well and hopefully some publishers at the same time to make your job yeah easier. that would be lovely um that yeah was... our, our friends at crypto writer kind of some folks who have been talking to a little bit about it and uh and you know i mean it's like it's kind of slow i, I think everything's slow in publishing and i think that's yeah. just kind of how it works <laughs> and perhaps <laughs> but, but, you know it's like the summer I, I, I reached out to a publisher here in austin and they, I, I think they were just like <laughs> what, what is this what, send, what is them, this? send them this Web video after <laughs> send this video and they go oh now i know what he's doing That's so right. i'm gonna stop the video now because it's we have loads of information in there we'll follow i'll put stuff in the show notes those those two links people can have a look the at the web 3.0 standard for books that's what we're working on. Okay, I love it. I see you sent me the, the link there. I will add it to the show notes. And this will be running this coming Saturday. And obviously, once it's up online, it's online forever. Woo! Thank you awesome. so much, indeed, Dylan. Thank you. Dylan, Dr. Dylan, who writes books and makes fun. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be on your, on your tombstone. Well done. That's a pretty good one. I like it. <laughs> Thank you.